mountain water once again. Howdy. <laughs> yeah. I just stumbled across a documentary and I wanted to share it with you. And I just thought I'd bring up some parts of the pieces of the theory about mountain water, that there has been a lot, a lot of electricity involved in the, within the creation of the mountains. And I'm not just talking particularly about the Alps. They are just now for me the prime example, since we don't have any mountains in Finland. <laughs> and I grew up in Switzerland. Now, anyway, mountain water, that's a very simplified picture of the whole creation process. But the lightning strikes, they made holes through the crust and the water went upwards. Earth, a Earth is a capacitor in space, so it is spheres within spheres within spheres within spheres and so on. And they expand from the magnetosphere to the atomic scale. The main force behind everything is electricity. Since it's billions and billions and billions and billions of times stronger than gravity. Gravity is just a side product, so to say, from the electromagnetic force. So, this whole theory about mountain water, here it is depicted in a different way. We have the White Rivers. I have shown this many times, hundreds of times. White Rivers near Udine, Italy, Parma, Italy, Valgau, Germany. Nalchik, Russia. Momor, France. Mount St. Helens, USA. White River, White Rivers. Mount St. Helens has the world's fastest growing glacier within its caldera. Mount St. Helens is a volcano. It has wide rivers. It has the world's fastest growing glacier within its caldera. My theory takes also into account geothermal activity. That's now from the Alps. Here we have the Portal Lake. which I think is fed from below because of the pattern of the ice. There are different colored sediments, so like if there would be different kinds of eruptions going on every now and then. I have been writing about this. Here we have, once again, Lake Portal from above with its very fascinating pattern. A little map I drew on Google Earth Portal C, Portal Lake up here. Some kind of a drainage path and the brick town, which got flooded. And here is a Google Earth picture from the side of Portal Lake. And the lake and its surroundings have a caldera crater like shape. What to do? It's, it looks like that. The theory, since we are talking about electricity and such, very important to understand is that our weather on Earth is driven entirely electrically. That's why high pressure systems and low pressure systems spin the direction they spin, because they are either positively or negatively charged. which I have been talking about as well. 
We have cyclones, anti-cyclones, up and down draft. We have shock waves. More geometry of the shock waves. Tetrahedrons, which are the triangular shaped buttresses from supersonic winds. So if you are talking about supersonic winds, it basically means the weather is very bad. Don't go outside if you experience supersonic winds. It might be not nice. But now to something relaxing. I stumbled across this video, it's some two years old or something. The fascinating world of deep mountain lakes. <laughs> yeah, one could think that I could get interested into that. Yeah, and I really got interested into this. And I just wanted to show you a part. And I still didn't manage to watch the rest, but I will soon do. So let's check this out quickly. Countless small streams gurgle down into the Alpine valleys from the high mountain peaks and fill up small lakes nestled deep inside enchanted forests. Some of the lakes are full of trees that couldn't carry the weight of the snow during winter and cracked off into the lake. It takes a longer time for the tree stumps to decay in the cold water. Covered with algae. They provide a mysterious underwater landscape. Perfect for this bizarre time traveler. The sterlet is part of the sturgeon family. They are primeval fishes that have barely changed in the last 200 million years. Yeah, actually, I have to search another part. Now it gets interesting. Think about, like, my theory is basically that every glacier carry a mountain is a volcano and glacier is a lava stream made of water, a contemporary lava stream. Because the volcano itself it is erupting mainly through ejecting water and probably also sediments. <laughs> but water is the main thing. So let's continue. Check this out. Only a few minutes by air. The mysterious Alat Lake is said to be a blood lake. From the outside, the Alat Lake looks like many other lakes in the Alps. But at a depth of 45 feet, that dramatically changes. This is where the blood cloud begins. Red and violet clouds drift through the water. From this point on, the water has almost no oxygen in it. These clouds consist of purple sulfur bacteria. They live off the toxic hydrogen sulfide that the water here contains in high concentrations. For thousands of years, the sulfur-rich, toxic water has stayed at the bottom of the lake without mixing with the upper water column. Yes. It would be very interesting to know when there has been some bigger change in the behavior of this lake the last time. Sulfur seems or sounds, at least to me, in a way related to volcanism. I probably have to check out this lake a bit further. And it would be interesting how many of these kinds of lakes are still in the Alps 
and many other places on earth still undiscovered because they are just in so remote places no one ever dived there they just don't know but anyway i recommend you to watch that fascinating world of deep mountain lakes there are fascinating pictures it's very nicely made but anyway yeah. Once again, mountain water. Like, I've never thought I would talk about something like this. Like this. But it's so fascinating. There's like an amazing amount of evidence and so many questions still to ask. Just the question is whom to ask? Is there anyone? Who knows and has the time, has a free and open mind to talk about stuff, which probably at first hand seems to be crazy. But I have gathered now a fair amount of evidence from many places around the world. So, is there anybody out there who has? interest to talk about this tale theory fascinating topic mountain water white rivers geothermal activity quakes sulfuric lakes castles churches the history the time we are in now right now the timest of times the window of knowledge is going to close rather soon so it's each individual's decision to gain search get information in order to understand or not for example geothermal activity most people think when they hear this word or words about hot springs it's really hot Maybe even geysers and stuff like Yellowstone. But I think, since we are talking about geothermal activity, we have to take the whole spectrum into account. For example, the temperature of the water, we have to take the hottest springs there are and the coldest there are. Which means we probably have to go even to minus degrees. Hence, glaciers. If we just take a certain amount of degree of water in order to look at geothermal activity, we may, might miss something because we have to take the whole spectrum into account. Minus degrees. Ice flows, glaciers, they are part of geothermal activity. I think so. If we leave them out, we will miss something of the picture. This is what I'm trying to say. And even though they are behaving rather gently, they are really slow and nothing happens ever. There's just water pouring out of the mountain and they just melt away. But there might be fluctuations. Like I said earlier, spheres within spheres within spheres. There is a sphere of water and earth and crust and hydrophilic materials. There's a whole bunch of water. And since it is within the material, it has a quite big surface, which means it is basically its own electrically charged body easy water which will react 
to changes in the electromagnetic environment of Earth rather quickly, instantaneously. So if the water is coming from the heavens, there is water also coming from below. They will meet, it just depends on the amount of it. And nature works in ways like path of least resistance, for example. And if you talk about mountain water, if there's like bad weather in the Alps or in the mountains, there are those springs. There's not just water, like at least now yet, maybe once there will. There's not just water pouring out everywhere out of the mountains. It usually comes there where it's already flowing. Like the water stream will increase a little bit or we will even flood the whole valley. Besides the heavy rain. But nature is searching the equilibrium. That's why the water, waters meet. Spheres grow and shrink. It seemed that they have been shrinking since there has been so many droughts. It might be that the water is just retreating like before the tsunami hits, it just retreats and then it comes back. And if you watch at rivers in Europe or wherever, if you have certain eyes, you can probably see that how big it once was. You can see meandering patterns far off the main river stream nowadays. Nowadays there are fields where, are, where they are growing food and stuff. Many years ago, the river has been probably very mighty. And now it's just a remnant of it. But the things fluctuate. And the weather has been very gentle to us humans in the last 400 years. But it's changing. You probably have noticed. So it's all about the water. The drought and food didn't grow. Now there's flooding. Fruit doesn't, doesn't grow because there's flood. First there's drought. Now it's flood. Food doesn't grow. That's a problem. It's a big problem. And where, the, where does the water coming from to grow our food mainly? From the mountains, wherever you go on earth. Mainly, not everywhere, but mainly. Check out India, where is the water coming from? From the Himalayas, for example. Italy, Germany, France, from the Alps, Poland. many other countries. You don't even have to have big mountains. Hills are far enough. Cryptodomes, they don't have to be big, but there could be many wells. And in Central Europe, there are many castles built probably on cryptodomes because there was water. Nowadays, there isn't probably any water anymore. Earthquakes destroyed the wells and springs and but earthquakes also can make the opposite. There could be new springs, like I have been talking about, about this case here, which just shut up, shut off like near a shrine in Japan some weeks ago. It's totally possible. And people aren't just aware of that. In the Alps region, no one ever thinks about the volcanoes. I do. I came to the conclusion that I have to. There is so much evidence. And it's very interesting. Thanks.